All right, there we go. Okay, so hey everybody, uh, it's uh, Professor Alex uh, here, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to use Animate. Yay! So uh, before we get started, I had a I I have an idea. Uh, I saw this in a uh, talk that uh, Stephen King did one time, where to make sure that everybody paid attention, he started a joke at the beginning of the talk. And then he told the punchline at the end. So I'm going to do that now just to make sure that you watch this whole video. So uh, the beginning of the joke. All right. So uh, two uh, two jumper cables walk into a bar. And then after we're done, I'll tell you what happened. What do they do? Okay. So let's get started. So first we're going to do, obviously, open up Flash. And you're going to click here, Action Script 3.0. Click on that sucker, which is going to give you a new thing. Now it goes to a default setting of like 550 by something or other, so we don't want that. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tell it to give us a new one. And yeah, 550 by 400. And we're gonna change this to 1920 and 1080. And then here's your frame rate. Um, you know, we'll knock it down to 12. Okay, so blam, there we go. And then you can see your screen got a lot bigger. So there you go. All right. And uh, to get started, we're just going to run down uh, the tools here. Now, this is uh, how I have mine set up. I think uh, when you guys open up Flash for the first time, I mean Animate for the first time, it'll probably be set up a lot different. But, uh, you know, you guys are smart. You can figure this out. So uh, first one here is the selection tool. So this basically, so here I got to, let's have this guy. Oh, yay. Okay. So the selection tool, basically, you can use that to select something, move it around, and you can get close to the line like that and kind of spread it out like that or sink it down. So if I had a line right there and it kind of got bunched up right there and I wanted to make that a little thinner, you can use the line tool to kind of just thin that out, select that, and delete it. And uh, so you know the key, uh, the uh, keyboard tool, uh, keyboard key for that is uh, the letter V. And uh, big thing, the uh, keyboard it's the best way to use any program really on the computer. Uh, learn your key commands, and um, it just makes things so much easier. And you'll see. So all right, so that's basically, you know, it's nothing much to this guy. It's just it moves it around. And it's um, just for that. Uh, this guy, don't worry about the school tool. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of all these. I'm going to tell you the tools that you're going to use a lot. There's, like any other program, uh, there's it's it's kind of like playing a video game, you know. Um, you know, the more you play, the more you're going to figure out some other levels, some other thing you can do. Um, but I'm basically giving you level one. Here's your basics that you'll be using. So this tool you'll need the selection tool. This tool the sub selection tool. Um, I, you know, I've been using this program for more than a decade and I don't think I've ever used this, so don't worry about that one. But this guy right here, this is your, uh, free transform tool. So this is, uh, this tool is, uh, you'll use a lot. So basically a lot like the, uh, the arrow tool, it select and you can move things around. But the nice thing is you can also move them around like this way. You can also grab the corner. Oh, come on. And move them around any kind of way you like. So this is great when you're working later for an animation, you can stretch, squash and stretch really easily. And uh, the key command for this guy is uh, letter Q. And why is it letter Q? Why not? Um, but some neat things with this is say, if I want to move this, but I want to stay the exact same size. So you can see like it kind of gets a little thinner, it gets a little fatter. There's two ways to do that. One, you can click on it and hit shift and that'll move it without messing around the uh, proportion of the face there. Or you can go over here to scale, and that'll just do it for you without having to hit shift. Nice thing with that is you also got this one, rotate and skew, and that way you can, um, hold on, I need to stop that. Oh. Hold on one second. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the wrong button. I'm thinking of this guy, the stork. <laughs> Forget that I forget that. So uh, that'll make you, you can kind of stretch one area. So say if you want to like give like the idea that you're looking up at this guy, right? 
So you can go to this and you go down here and click there and hit shift and that'll move both sides. So it kind of looks like you're looking up a little more. See what I mean? And this is great when you make uh, like a signs and all that type of stuff. So if I have like a sign that says eat at Joe's, you know, a very typical cartoon thing. And there's my very crummy sign. Uh, I can select all of that and then using this tool, do that little trick I just showed you. And then they could look like I'm looking up at a sign from like a character's point of view down here. And you get what I mean. All right. So what else? What else? What else? Uh, that's this tool. Uh, also another thing. So here I'll draw another face for you. Kind of. Um, you know, this hair again. So give him some teeth and a uh, mustache. All right. Uh, another thing you can do is you can use this tool right here. And this will let you go in. And this is great for, like, I use this a lot with, like, uh, morphing text. Like, if I'm working on something and something's, like, written on a ball, I can now move the text around or move a face around, move whatever I want to move around and have it kind of fit that shape. You know what I mean? Um, and there's a lot of fun things you can do with this tool. It's just, it's, it's great. It's one you'll be using a lot. So let me put one more guy there. Uh, there we go, and now he's, he's upset that I'm wasting my time drawing. All right, this tool, um, I've never used this one before, uh, so I won't worry about it right now. Lasso tool is a big one. So a lot of programs and a lot of things, you're kind of used to using your eraser. And you can still use your eraser on this, but I'm going to suggest instead of using an eraser, use your lasso tool. It just makes it the cuts a lot cleaner and just easier to use. So it's just like any other program, use your lasso tool, grab that. And now once it, you know, lassos, it'll select that and I can move that over there. Or I can just, you know, go ahead and delete it. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's it's a lasso tool. It's very handy and it's, uh, it's, it's great. No, no, no. All right, uh, moving along is the pen tool. Won't have to worry about that. Text tool is very basic, it's just, you know, the right text. You know, it's right there. Hi there. Um, nothing too fancy with that. It's just very typical stuff. Um, and the align tool here. All right. So this is for some of you. Um, if you're having trouble like drawing with the actual, uh, like so, so sometimes this is another way you can use draw. Align tool is basically just it makes lines. See. Blah, blah, blah. And the nice thing is you can go in and using your arrow tool. Grab that and move it around, and it stays the same width all around. So uh, a lot of animation studios will just draw with this line tool. Uh, for example, I think there was a cartoon that's like on PBS Kids called Word Girl, and I think this is how, if I remember correctly, this is how they drew everything. They used the line tool. Uh, they basically just you know went ahead and just did lines, and they uh, did all that. Um, and as you see there, the uh, the keyboard command is the letter N. And why is it N? Why not? And yeah, so. And let's see, what else we got? And also right here, if you want to change the color of your line tool, you go down here and see they all turn green or you can turn them you know, red. And um, let's see, where's preferences? Or properties, excuse me. So if you want to say like if you want to make this line and you want to make it nice and thick, you go in here, select it there, and in properties, go down to stroke, and you can just make it nice, whatever size you like. And you got like style stuff down here, which is you know if you want to do like if you wanted to draw something that was like a cutout, you can just you know like I just showed you with that guy, you can draw that. But then let's see, it's kind of neat. I know they're all stuck together. And uh, yeah, so. Um, that's basically it. basically it for the line tool. Um, all right, moving on. What's next? All right, so this is uh, these guys are basically just like the line tool. You got a rectangle, blam! You got a rectangle. All right, everybody's happy. And oh, let me get rid of that dot line nonsense. Let's just have a regular straight. You know, nothing fancy. All right. So you got your rectangle tool, 
and you can just make a rectangle. And if you look closely, um, you can see the uh, outline there. There's a, that little green line there. So if you want to, you know, say like uh, if you want to make a window, you could, uh, and you want to like the lines to be just right. You can take the rectangle tool, get rid of the middle there, and then, you know, make another one right here, get rid of that, select all that, copy it, paste it in place, scoot it over, then select that, copy, paste, scoot it down, and you get your, you're on your way to making a window. And, um, and yeah, like before, you can, uh, you know, you can move around the lines and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I will tell you with the line tools, when uh, especially these guys, so when they cross like this, that means those are now connected. And that's just, that's how it goes. Um, so that's just one thing to look out for, you know, and that, uh, unless you want, and if you don't want it to connect, if you want to move this down, you can always put that and put that on the layer, but we'll get the layers in a minute. Okay, and uh, like the uh, rectangle tool is the, oh, and by the way, rectangle tool uh, is letter R for rectangle. That one actually makes sense. Uh, o, or the oval tool, it's letter O, and it's just like that. You make O's. This is good uh, if you want to make uh, perfect eyes. You know, it'll give like uh, some very quick, you know, like Garfield style eyes. You know, like, oh, these look better. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then over here you got your uh, polystar tool. This is kind of the same deal. And um, is it this one? No, I guess it's uh... yeah. Okay. And um, if you go in here, and it's been a while since I've done this. Let me see if I can figure it out. Um. All right. Never mind. Yep, so there's a polygon tool, and there it is. It's all neat, you know, making shapes, all that type of stuff. Uh, all right, so moving on. There's a pencil tool. You'll never use that. Uh, but the paintbrush, uh, this is the one that I use every single day. What is this? Ooh, go away. All right, so paintbrush tool, and this is what I basically want you guys. Uh, yeah, this is a little cute thing with the hand tool. I'll tell you about this in a minute. They think they're being clever, but it's kind of a pain in the neck. All right, but. Getting back on track. The pen tool. All right. Uh, so this is basically what you're going to be using to draw all the time. Now, if you look closely, uh, these lines, it basically looks like I'm drawing with a mouse, right? It, it, it looks terrible. So get rid of that. And the way to make it look nice is you got your options over here, which is you use your tilt. So turn that on just by clicking it. And your pre pressure sensitive. And your brush size, number three is a good size. And then you got... A nice, nice line that you can kind of control a little bit better. And let's get like a little thicker line there. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, now you can get a little thickness there, a little thinness, and and this is, uh, this is, I mean, this is the tool that I use every day. Um, and this is what I want you guys to be using in class. And so say if um, are you doing a line and you want like the next line to be, uh, you want like the center there or next little bit to be red. So this is what you use for your outlines when you're using these tools. For your brush, you use the fill color tool. And this gives you lots of options down here. Or if you want to, you can click on here and you kind of pick whatever, just like in Photoshop, pick whatever you want. So let's use that blue. And then wham, all right. Um, very nice. Everybody's happy. Yay. Okay. Uh, bone tool. We're not going to worry about that. Paint bucket tool. All right. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's pick a different color. Um, uh, play the eye drop. Oh, we're coming up to the eye drop. Here's the eye drop tool. All right. So, say here is something I want to be colored in, right? I got some, uh, this guy's eyes. Here you go. Why they're always making them angry? Uh, they just are. So say I want to make him have uh, blue eyes like this. All right, now you can take your eyedropper, which we're skipping ahead. Here's your eyedropper tool, and that you know you can go anywhere and just like in Photoshop, or anything else, you can pick the color you want and go from there. So now that color is selected. So I have this, and once you click on it, 
it'll automatically take you to the paint bucket tool so you can fill it in. So let's fill in his eyes. So that's great. Great, it's working. And you'll notice it's not working here. So what the heck, why is it not working? The trick is over here, you have, this controls the gap sizes. So you have these options. And the best way to do it is just have closed large gaps. So you do that, and there's still a huge gap there. So it's probably not gonna, it'll probably fill in the whole head, not just the eyeball. Oh, there you go, I'll just fill in that much. So that's just a matter of, you know, making that a little tighter. And that'll just fill up right there. Fill up right there, right there. And so say if I like had a little hole right there, so the paint puck tool, and it should still fill up, see? And the paint puck tool, what is that? It is K. K for paint puck. Sure. Okay. But it's K. And that, the reason why they picked these letters and your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Somebody, there was some guy that made sense to them and he decided to keep it a secret. And if I forget, I forget if I said it or not, uh, but paintbrush, or the brush tool, excuse me, is, as you can see, the letter B. And if you're always wondering, you always hover over the uh, icon and I'll tell you right there. Okay, so I kind of give you a heads up on the eye drop. It's just a matter of picking a color and I'll go into paint bucket and you can just color stuff in. Uh, well, like Microsoft Paint all of a sudden. It's, you know. And I'll say, like it show you there, you can fill in the actual lines that you do. Um, and then you get your eraser. The eraser's fine, but like I said before, the uh, uh, most of the time, selection tools could be a little better because sometimes when you erase, it's not going to erase all the way. And it's just going to act kind of goofy. And I was, I would suggest either selecting it with uh, your arrow, your selection tool, just deleting it, doing it that way, or using your lasso and just doing it, you know, that way. And then you can smooth it out with the arrow. It just makes it a lot easier. Um. All right. What else? Uh. So there's whatever that is. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. All right. Your hand tool. So this is a something new that they added which is just that nobody likes it's you know but uh hand tool is great because what i'll do is say all right so we're close up here and i want to if i want to see the entire page i'll go to the hand tool and i'll double click it and that'll bring me right back out and um and the same thing with like other programs it does the same thing you just double click on that hand tool and you can see the larger picture and you can see how close up it were now if uh so say i'm drawing like right here and I want to get up there. So I'll go to the hand tool, which is the letter H, and I can just scoot over and uh, draw over there, draw la 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 la. Then I want to get back to here, give him a soul patch so he looks sharp, a little collar, a little bow tie, you know what's going on at the time. And then I want to go down a little more. All right, so the idea, so that's the regular hand tool. Then they added this rotation tool, which I frankly think is annoying. Uh, and that, the idea with that is to, so you can move the thing around like it's a piece of paper. But then it so often happens that you mess it up and you can't really undo it. If you can double click it on it and it'll go back to normal. It's just, it's annoying. They think it's cute, but you know, it's, it's not so annoying to get you off the entire program. Uh, but yeah, and, um. Later on, I'll show you in class, uh, there's two, so you'll notice there's two buttons on your actual pen. And I, I suggest uh, to make those buttons the your brush and your hand tool. And that'll just make it, things a lot easier for you. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Moving on. Uh, there's the zoom tool, which you, you guessed it, will help you zoom in. I can also go over here, which does the exact same thing. And this is a lot of pro, uh, programs. There's always like five ways to do one thing. Uh, so yeah, and then you have your zoom out, you know, very typical, or you can double click. Also, if you double click on the zoom, it'll show you what this looks like at 100%. So, uh, this is it at, you know, so say you zoom out or you double click on the hand tool. That's 39% of, that's the quality that you're seeing. If you want to see it at hundred percent, you just double click on that and it'll zoom in for you. Or if you zoom in way close, that'll give you 1,658%. Woohoo! All right, and that kind of does it up. And like I said, this shows you how to give you the colors for your lines. And this gives you the colors for your uh, paintbrush item. So.
that is a quick rundown of the tools there. So let's uh, let's see. Let's scoot over to your timeline. Oh, all right. So here's your timeline, and this is basically all your frames. It's kind of like all your pieces of paper if you're doing this by hand. So first thing I was going to show you is just how to make a new layer. So say I, you know, let's draw something really crummy real quick. So I got this guy. Um, he's very happy. You know, all these guys kind of look the same. I'll give him a little Red Sox hat. So that's a kind of a very crummy picture, right? But if I, really, I wanted to draw on top of that and really kind of clean it all up, I would lock this. And over here, this guy right here gives you a new layer. So now, and then I can turn the color off on this. It'll make it just this kind of like outline blue. And that way I can zoom in and, you know, kind of get the details on the hat, take my time. You know, I'm not taking my time here. I'm going fast, but, you know, you can uh, add a little details and like, ah, I can do better than that. Here we go. So anyways, you get it. And then you can always turn that off to see what it looks like. You turn it back on to kind of give you a good, good example. So that way, later when you're animating, uh, I'm going to have you guys animate very roughly, and that way you can draw on top of your roughs and make it nice and clean. And this is the way to do it, um, or one of the ways to do it. So that's how you make a new layer. So say you want to make a new frame. So what you do is on your keyboard, you're going to go to Fn, and it's F on the very top of the keys, it's F5. We'll just kind of push this out longer. So if we're watching this as an animation, this will just run that, and it's just the same image. Now, if I want to make a new frame, that's Fn, and then you push the button F6. And there's a new frame, just to show you the difference. Uh, here, I'll do it on my little crummy drawing down here. Turn that back on. F6. Uh, let's take my free transform tool and we'll squish them down like that. The start of a squash stretch. Now, if you go back over here, you can see that's a different thing. All right. Now, if I wanted to do something with uh, a new frame with absolutely nothing on there, I, I want to get rid of this drawing entirely. Uh, I would then go to Fn and then F7, which will just get rid of it. So there he is. Um, and also the key command, by the way, uh, to go back and forth between frames. So you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm doing it on the keyboard. It's um, the comma and the period key. So comma will take you left, periods will go take you right. And when you look at it, you can see like little arrows uh, from like math class, little alligators there. And they'll point you in the right direction that you want to go. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's see. Now say if I had this here, but I want this, like this guy, this original drawing, I can just copy, paste in place. So now I can do a, go back here, add a keyframe. Got another one right there. So let's see. Um, we'll do get rid of this guy. Add this. So we do a very quick squash and stretch. It's not going to be doing or really doing anything, but just to show you how this works. Da -da -da, very like two second thing. So now he's a little bouncy. And uh, hit play, uh, just to play it, it's just as, as easy as hitting return. Or you can go down here and do that way. There's no difference. Just one way of being fancy, one way is not being fancy. Uh, now, say, all right, now if you have this layer and you're like, all right, this drawing, I thought it was going to be great. It's, it's garbage. I hate it. And I want to get rid of this layer. So, but, and this is just, doing this, uh, it's still going to make your file pretty big. So just to get rid of it later, it's as easy as going to delete. Blam, done, it's in the trash. And also make sure to lock your layers too. So that way when you're, if you got like three layers going on, you got a line over here, you got a line over there, you're not going to mess up and, you know, click on the wrong thing and it's going to like, oh, I meant to draw this or I went to draw over here, but I meant that to be down there. Just make sure you know what layer you're on, lock them, make sure it's all safe. It's not, you know, just a matter of doing it. Nothing to it. Um... Oh, by the way, as you saw, I was undoing a lot. That's uh, just Command-Z, you know, 
Uh, and I think uh, redo um, is command Y, as you can see. And that's just right, undo, redo. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Now say, so, yeah, let's see. All right, there's that. Now I'm gonna show you. So, that, I mean, that's just your know, layers and timeline stuff. Um, and I know I'm throwing a lot of this at you pretty fast, so, you know, it's a video, rewind it. Um, now you got uh, these guys down here. These are very, very helpful, especially for animating. So say I wanted to do something like it in between, uh, between these two, right? So I would push this out a little bit and add in a blank right there, or a blank frame, and then push this out a little bit. So if I go here, but I want to see what was on this page and this page, I can use these tools down here, this is onion skins. So let's just click on this one. And oh, since it's locked, it's not showing me what's on there. When I unlock it, you can see, and to really show it off here, I'll turn this off. Make this guy, all right. And now when you go over here, you turn the onion skin back on, and you can see the green outline showing the one on the right, as you can see, and the blue outline being the one on the left. So I can go in here and then animate that. All right, it's your very, you know, now and you just, it's just very typical animating. Just draw in between everything. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, so you can see it's, oh, come on. So boom, 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 boom. Yeah, la di da. So there's that, and then there's also, let's just erase this so you can see a little better. Uh, there's also this version, which just makes the lines a little clearer. So it's not just the outline, it's a full full line. And that'll be that'll be a huge thing when you are when you start to animate. You'll be using that thing all the time. Uh, and now say if um, I want to take all these frames, but i now watching the video, I'm like, and I throw in the background, and I'm like, oh, I want this just to be over there. I want all these. I did all this animation. I don't want to have to redo it. Uh, what you can do is go to this very helpful guy, edit multiple frames. You click on this, and you you move these little circle guys over all the frames that you want, and you select them all, and you can move all these frames all at the same time. And if you want to make it smaller, you just make that sucker smaller. And then you unclick this, and you'll see they're all over there now. And then he gets huge over here again. It's kind of a do 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 blah. And um, yeah, so now some other things on here that I'll show you as we go along, getting into symbols and all that. But um, this is kind of what you need to know for right now, moving on to the class. Um, I'll send this video out to you guys all in a uh, on the uh, blackboard and emails and all that stuff. Feel free to look at as many as much as you like. If you have any questions at all, because as you know, I'm going to be out of town, um, you know, feel free to email me. I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Uh, some of the questions, it'll probably run into the nighttime. Uh, but email me. I'll have my phone with me. I'll be checking it as much as I can. So any questions at all, uh, I'll be happy to answer them for you. And, uh, oh, and uh, wrap this all up. So uh, the uh, two jumper cables walk into a bar. And the bartender looks him over and says, all right, I'll serve you two, but I don't want you to start anything. Thanks, guys, and uh, see you see later.